Hello everyone and welcome to my beginner's tutorial for Sony Vegas. It's for beginners that are trying to learn the program a little better. Anyways, I'm just going to get right into it. The first thing I'm going to talk about is organizing your workspace. Now if you just installed Sony Vegas and you opened it up for the first time, it should look something like this. The colors might be a little different, but that just has to do with your theme. Um, but the windows and the tabs and everything should be laid out accordingly like this. Now one of the great things about Sony Vegas is that you have the full capability to rearrange your workspace to your liking. For example, let's go over here to the master volume controls and there's these six dots on the left hand side. If we just click on them, we can drag them and move them to the left hand side if we want. Or we can drag them off into so it's like its own window. Or we can just delete it completely. And right now we're going to delete some of the areas that we aren't going to use. Uh, right now, here we are with our tabs. There's several tabs for us to use. I'm just going to delete three of them that I don't use at all. So here we have the explore tab. Let's just go to the X in the top left corner click on that it'll delete it same thing for trimmer and the media manager get rid of those three tabs you should be left with project media transitions video effects and media generators these are the four tabs that I use the most uh, I have no use whatsoever for explorer trimmer and media manager so I just get rid of them it keeps it a little cleaner now the whole bottom half of the screen this is called the timeline this is where you basically do everything um, now if you're using Sony Vegas 7 or earlier your timeline might be on the top instead of the bottom and even if it is on the bottom, you can put it back to the top if that's what you like. So I'm just going to show you how to do that right now. So go to the Options menu at the top, scroll down all the way to the bottom to Preferences, go to the Display tab, and here where it says Display Timeline at bottom of main window, uncheck that and hit OK. Many people prefer their timeline to be on top of the screen rather than on bottom, but I learned how to use Sony Vegas with the timeline on the bottom, so I'm just going to keep it like that. So again, just go to Options, Preferences, Display, and then just have Display Timeline at bottom of main window checked. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to set up your preview window. Now let's go to the File menu at the top and go to Properties. And here is our preview window properties right here. I'm going to change this template to NTSC widescreen 720 by 480, 29.970 frames per second. And now I'm just going to take the width here and change it to 1280, and the height is going to go to 720. Now you don't have to do this. You should do this to match the settings of your video camera or screen recorder. Um, all my video clips are in widescreen high definition, so I'm changing the, sit the settings accordingly. Okay, so I got my settings. I'm going to go down here to start all new projects with these settings. Check that and hit OK. Now you're going to notice that our preview window is a lot wider. It's in a widescreen format, 16 by 9 rather than um, just a square or 4 by 3. Now it doesn't really fit, so what we're going to do is put our mouse on the left hand side here until your icon changes into this. Once you see that icon, click and drag it to the left until it fills the whole screen. Now you can uh, get custom settings if you watch my HD widescreen settings for YouTube. That's how I use all my HD settings for my videos. So mine's a little different right now, but that's just because I'm not using my perfect settings. I'm just using a quick setup, so you can make it smaller if you want. I'm just going to keep it around this size. Now, while we're at the preview window, I may as well talk about some of the options up here. Right here, this is probably your most important option. It's called preview quality. Now, the better you have the settings, the better quality it's going to look in the preview. However, it's also going to take more of your memory to process it. So, if you have a really bad computer, you might want to keep it at draft or preview auto. I keep it at preview auto at all times. But if you have a computer that has a lot of memory, you can uh, change it to good or best. I'm just going to keep it at preview auto though. Okay, so now let's import some media into our timeline. Let's go to the top left corner where it says file. Hit that, go to import media. And now it shows you this dialog box and you can check the directory f and import some media of your choice. I'm just going to go to my documents. I'm going to go to folder here, stock video, and I have a waterfalls high definition clip that I got from a website. By the way, uh, this video clip is royalty free, so there's no copyrights or anything whatsoever. Okay, so now it is in our project media tab here, and once it's here, we can just click on it and drag it into the timeline. Now that the clip is in our timeline, let's go down here to our playing controls and hit play from start. It's the one that looks like a triangle with a vertical bar to the left hand side. Just click on that, and it will start previewing. Now since this is a high definition clip, it uh, kind of lags a bit, so if that's the case, you can either change your resolution to a worse one, like this, and it'll run a little smoother, or you can also do a RAM preview, so I'm just going to change this to preview auto, then hit shift and B, and now it's done a RAM preview and it should run totally smoothly. Also, go to your preview window, right click on it, and make sure simulate device aspect ratio and scale video to fit preview window, make sure both of those are checked. 
Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to add effects to any video clip. Let's go to our video effects tab right here, and let's just get something cool. Uh, TV Simulator is pretty exciting. So there's a variety of presets. Well, for TV Simulator, it's not that much, but if you go to something like uh, Color Corrector, there's a variety of settings. But let's just go to TV Simulator and drag TV Look. Just click and drag it onto your video clip. And then if you look in the preview window, the preset has already been um, added to the video clip. Now we also have the settings right here and we can change them accordingly. So if I take this and put it all the way to the right or most of the way to the right, you can see that the settings, they change in real time as well, which is kind of nice. So you can change all these settings the way you want to customize your own look. And we can also animate the settings so that it can go from no settings at all to really intense settings. So this is called keyframe and I'm going to talk about that right now. So let me just delete this video effect right here. It's up here. It's this little green icon with the X. It says remove selected plugin. Just click on that. And there you go. It's deleted. So now I'm going to talk about some basic keyframing. Let's go to TV simulator and drag reset to none onto our video clip. And now we're going to do some very simple keyframing. Now right here, this whole section here, this is our keyframing editing window, or whatever you want to call it. Now if you don't see anything here, it should look something like this. Now if this is what's happening to you, just put your mouse at the bottom of the screen and drag up, and there's your keyframes. So what we're going to do now is since uh, everything is set to the default settings, everything is just, there's no settings at all. We're going to take this little scrubber head here and just push it ahead two seconds. There's the little markers on top here, so push it to this two second mark. And now we're gonna take line sync and push that a bit to the left. And we're gonna have detail zoom up, aperture grill up a bit, interlacing up a bit, and scan phasing. Now if we just exit this and play, we have a TV simulator effect. And it's all animated with that one keyframe. So I'm going to stop that, and I'm just going to delete this video clip right here. So click on it and hit the delete key on your keyboard. And now I'm going to delete this whole video track. Just right-click on it, hit delete track. Now let's uh, make some media generators. So go to your media generators tab, and we're just going to get some basic uh, media, I guess. So go to the noise texture one, and uh, let's just get something cool like uh, soft clouds. And drag it into the timeline. And again, I'm just going to show you some basic keyframing. So let's go to our keyframes here push the scrubber head to the four second mark, put progress in degrees all the way up, and exit it. Now if we play it, we have a nice animation going here. Okay, now I'm going to talk about panning and cropping. Now if we go up to our video clip here, just click on that, and now we can pan into our video or crop it or whatever you really want. So again, we also have keyframes here. Push the scrubber head up to the four second mark so that it's in sync with the animation we did earlier. So our keyframe head is at the four second mark, now we're going to go up here to the bottom right corner and just drag into the top left corner, like so. Now we can hit the X up here and play it again. And now we have two animations going on at once. We have the animation where the clouds are moving and we also have it pan into the top left corner. Now I'm going to show you how to put fades in and out of video clips. Now let's say we want a fade going into this clip, so we'll just zoom in here with your mouse wheel and go up here to the top left corner of the video clip until you see this icon here. It says fade offset 000 and just a bunch of zeros. Click on that and drag to the right and now we have a fade. We're going to do the same thing on the far right hand side. Now if we preview it, we have a fade into the clip and if we wait a few seconds we'll also have a fade going out. The animation stopped right there but the fade will still be there. Okay, so now we have our video and it's all ready. Let's just render it. Now rendering is the process of taking your your video settings and compressing it into a video file that's compatible via DVD, email, online sharing, whatever. Now to render your video, go to File, Render As, and here we can render our video. Now, first of all, choose your directory. I'm just going to save it to my desktop for now, and you can choose a file name. I'm just going to call this Test Video. Now we have to pick a type. Um, I'm not really going to go too into detail on them. Most of them are compatible with YouTube, but um, I'll just quickly, quickly describe them. First of all, ignore all the audio ones like 8-track audio, FLAC, and MP3. Since we have a video, the, the audio settings have no use to us. Now the very bottom one is the one I prefer the most, Windows Media Video V9 or a .wmv. This is a very good file type for online viewing and it's very compatible with Windows uh, PCs. 
So this is my uh, number one recommended file type, but there's also video for Windows.avi and there's also QuickTime 7.mov. Uh, we're just going to choose Windows Media Video, and uh, I already have a template here, but we're just going to choose the default template. And you can also customize your template, but first of all, make sure that render loop region only is unchecked. Very important. Now let's go to this custom button here, and now let's go to video rendering quality. You can choose whatever setting you want. Uh, most of the time, you're going to want to choose best. You can also change the audio, video, bitrate, and index settings. I'm just going to leave them at the default right now and hit OK. Once you've customized all your settings, just hit the save button and your video begins rendering. I'm just going to speed this up. And once your video is done rendering, we can just minimize the program and go to our desktop. Here we have our test video. Double click on it and it will play in Windows Media, Windows Media Player. Here's our video. Very cool. So I hope that this video um, has showed you some new things if you're a beginner and uh, I might expand on this and show you a little more advanced techniques like masking and compositing modes and such but right now I just wanted to show you the basics and hopefully you understand the program a little more and uh, if you have any questions just write a comment in the box below and I'll try and answer you as soon as I can. Also please rate the video and if you like my tutorial subscribe. Uh, thanks and see ya.